Welcome back to Dusty Boots Outdoors. Today, we've got Brett with us. Nice to meet you, Brett. Thanks, Dusty. I see you've got a nice dual cab cruiser here. Oh, a Chop Down 200 series. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about it? What is it? What year model? Uh, so it's a 2013 Cut Down 200. Um, originally just had it as a family car, soccer mum's car for the first couple of years. Yeah. Because uh, we originally had a Cut Down 80 series, but was not extended or anything like that. So just a fair upgrade, this one. Very nice, mate. And before this, you were running an 80 series? Yeah. Yeah, and it was chopped as well? Yeah, so I cut it at home in the shed. Um, and I put the DI engine in it, the 1H DFTE. Yeah. So it, it was a tough truck. Um, got a lot more character, I reckon, than, than the one we have now. But this is a lot nicer to drive and quieter and comfort. Yep. So it has the fridge and everything in it too. So we pretty much tried to make it into our own Super Tourer, I guess. Yep. Um, it doesn't have a winch at the back or anything like that but um, got some custom made side steps made up for it due to with the extension obviously the side steps original only comes to there um, so I've got a couple of custom ones of them made and then moving through um, got the airbag man suspension put in it yep so it can be all controlled inside the cabin. Yep, so we've got own, lower the height. own compressor and all that in there. Yep, so there's a big, big twin compressor in this compartment in here. Yep, that's a go. Nice and quick to pump the tyres back up when you're on the beach. That's right, yeah. Nice rear toolboxes. It's yep. got a twin three inch into a single four inch stainless at the rear. Yep. Exhaust. Quite a decent size exhaust on it. Had you had any engine upgrades on it? Um, I haven't had the engine tune done, but I have. It has got a chip. Yeah, right. All eh? right. Um, it's got a AAA exhaust airbox just to keep the dust out of them. Yep. So the 200s pretty much suffer a little bit with the clips letting go on the top of the airbox, allowing that dust to get in there. So. Yep. Just looking after the engine. That's it. And what do you do for your camping? Your swags, rooftop um, so tent. Haven't gone down the rooftop tent road yet. Um, we are talking about that. So at the moment, we just use just a standard a Black Wolf. Yep. Um, 30 yeah, second just, or one minute tent, whatever they call yeah, them. Yeah, that's yep. it. Just throw the swags out in there and yep. camp up. Very nice. And yeah, just sort of live off the side of the car. A couple of quick shades. Yep. And the car itself, mate, it's like all battery set up. You got lithium yeah, or anything so in there? I haven't got a lithium in there at the moment. I only just sort of done the battery setup. Still not 100%, but it's just got a the BC to DC. Um, I think it's the dual 50. Yep. So solar. I have two 120 watt panels on the roof. And uh, it just charges a couple of ADM batteries. When I do get a lithium in there, I want to put a slimline lithium in there up against the headboard. Yep. Uh, to take up less room. So yeah, pretty much on the other side, I just got it's just an upright freezer, um, a 240 volt one. Oh, right, yeah. Sort of tried and tested up there. Um, it works well, does chew a fair bit of power. Um, the two panels would hold it, but probably not consistently. And Ingle's fine, but when you're catching a few fish, just say you get a couple of Spanish mackerel for the day, the Ingle would struggle a little bit to pull them down nice and quick. Oh, I suppose there's three fridges, so you've got to have one for beer, haven't you? <laughs> There's a few beers in this one in yeah. the fridge, yeah. Uh, that one's just got a few cold trout in it at the moment. Oh, the, I feel like. The small one. Yeah. That we caught yesterday. Do you still find the need to take a Jenny with you? or We do take a Jenny. Like down the river and that or camping on a weekend and no. No, yeah. Don't need the Jenny at all, mate. But yeah. For them extended trips, yeah, we still do take a generator. Yeah, very nice. And you brought the car originally as a family family wagon. Yeah, we brought it second hand. It actually originally had 40,000 K on it. Um, I think we put 40 on it the first year we had it. So, definitely yeah. a nice car. And what was it? You brought this boat and thought you needed a bit more power? Yeah, pretty much that was it, mate. The, I didn't think the 80 series was going to tow it where we want to go up in the Cape. Yep. So, yeah, that's why we, we cut the car. Right, eh? And what is the boat, mate? This is quite a weapon. Right, I so, say. Supporting a few more local businesses in Mackay. A uh, fella called Cole Spenson makes Spenson boats, which is the, uh, so I've got a six metre fisher. Yep. 
custom made with all rod lockers and tackle lockers in the side of it and big cast deck in the front. Um, pretty much got coal to make the frame of the trailer but then I made all the rock guards and mud guards and under body tanks and that on it so it's got 240 litre tank carry extra fuel yeah right eh um for where so, we go up into the remote areas cart extra fuel for the boat yep so what was there two hundred uh 200 and 140 litre tanks one each side, side. yeah right eh? and what's the boat actually hold uh the boat holds 250. oh wow so with that suzuki on there that have to get your fair range yeah it's got a 200 suzy on it uh yeah, it's got plenty of range on it. Yep. Sort of get about 1.6, 1.8, depending on what I'm doing. Yep. Added a litre in it. Yep. So it's a pretty heavy boat to push along, but. Yeah, you wouldn't want to get it stuck on a mud bank up there. No. <laughs> definitely not. Yeah. Uh, very nice. And mate, all this stuff you've got here, like you, you get out there, you use it, like this, been to the Cape, been to Fraser, stuff like that. I've never been down to Fraser. So yep. I've only ever been north. Um, I recently just came back from Cape York uh, about three weeks ago. So, yeah, yeah. we actually went up twice this year. We went up just with the, the car. We went and had a look around, um, sort of down the whole east coast side of the Cape. And then we came home, got married and oh. packed the boat up again. Obviously, you can't go too many places for a honeymoon at the moment. Yep. So we hooked the boat on and, and went back up. Spent um, nearly three weeks up there. Yep. Fishing out of uh, Weeper on the west coast, Marpoon. Hey, you've done pretty well if you can talk the new missus into a fishing trip for a honeymoon. <laughs> right, you've done all right there. She'll get her honeymoon after the yep. the uh, borders open. What do you love about your setup? What is it? Oh, I love everything about it. Uh, I kind of built the boat and the car for a reason. You know, we wanted to get, get remote and then, you know, launch the boat in a creek. The boat's still small enough to, to launch off a beach somewhere and then go up the coastline and go into remote areas where, you know, camp a couple of nights. Yep. All right, so it's got, the boat's got a, a good charge system in it that I can run an angle pretty much full time in there. Um, fridge. So I'm pretty much self-sufficient for a couple of days until you run out of fuel anyway. Yep. The question for me is like, I'm looking at doing this myself. Was it easier to push the 80 series through the bushes and scratch it up than it is to do the 200? <laughs> oh, yeah, by far. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look around, the 80s are a pretty tough truck. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, these are a lot wider too. So it's a lot bigger truck to move around yep. in the scrub, but. Do you find that an issue? Like a lot of the tracks are that little bit narrower, like your 80 or your 100 fits through, but the yeah. 200? Yeah, well, I mean, when you go into the Cape, you seem to see a lot more the old GQ, GUs and the 80s and 100s, you know. I mean, yeah. they're the, I mean, they're the trucks that can go up there and if they do stop on the side of the road, you can not fix them That's most it, of the time, yeah. you know. Once these new trucks, um, obviously something goes wrong, there's not a lot of the time you can fix it up there. That's it, a lot of times it can be just job. a little sensor or part, but it's enough to bring it down. Yeah, so I looked at a few different options at the start before we cut it i was gonna i looked at the iveco truck yep the four drive version but only came in a four cylinder so that one went out the window and um also looked at a ram yeah right eh? all right but same thing if it stops up there that's him no one can fix it so the next yeah. best thing was the 200 obviously i mean there's a lot of them around and a lot of guys in Australia that have parts here in Australia for them, so. That's it, and even if you are, I find if you're broken down somewhere remote, there's a chance someone in town's got the same car, you might be able to borrow a part to work out what's wrong with yours. That's right. And then get the right part flown in. Yeah. Where when we start talking about the Silverados and the Rams and stuff, they're still a very uh, limited market, I suppose. That's right, they and are, mate. Finding someone that knows about them. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, this thing can tow, no worries at all. If people think a Ram can, you know, our hands and feet above them, I, I don't think so. I mean, people that haven't been for running a, in one of these, um, the first thing they say to you is, you know, they've got plenty of power. Well, thank you very much for your time and um, all the best on your travels. All right, thanks, yeah. Basti. No, awesome. Thanks for giving us a couple of minutes with your car. Thank you. Too easy.